this is Kim Ironman back with John Hayden at the Farm Between in beautiful Jeffersonville, Vermont. And we're looking at uh, one of John's bee houses. Could you tell us a little bit about this bee house, what it's attracting, and how it's kind of operating? Okay, well, this was initially designed to attract the uh, Blue Orchard Mason Bee, which is a great early spring pollinator that we would need to take care of our apples and plums and cherries, and a really early growing fruit. And uh, we're trying to attract them into here. We've had limited success, meaning we haven't had any show up yet, but we're getting all kinds of really interesting biodiversity going on in here. One of the things, we, we put straws in here so that we can clean it out. The back is openable and we can pull out the straw so we're not getting... So you're using like a plastic straw here? Well, yeah, paper straw. Paper straw. So there's, so there's good, uh, not a lot of moisture buildup. So we use a paper straw so we can clean it out and we don't get a lot of mites and diseases and mm -hmm. stuff built up for now the I know bees there. With some of these houses, people actually drill out the holes to clean them out. Do you, mm -hmm. do you use that technique as well? Uh, no, we just use the straws. Okay. It's easier for us. Okay. And uh, then um, this was this is a different this is a different style where we use a Phragmites reed, which is an invasive species. So we're happy Perfect. to, Good we're happy to cut it. those down and uh, use them for that. And um, we're getting all kinds of interesting occupants. This is a grass carrying wasp that occupied this one. So they they plug up the the cells with grass that they gather. And they provision their young with these little tree crickets. And all these little things that are flying around my finger right mm -hmm. now, those are parasitic wasps. The female wasp provisioned this with tree crickets that she gathered, mm -hmm. laid an egg in it. Yep. The larva developed on those tree crickets. Then that got parasitized by these little flying wasps, these tiny little parasitic wasps mm -hmm. here. And, uh, you know, it's just like, Things on top of things on top of things, all connected and interconnected. So this will, this will, even though we're not getting the blue orchard mason bee, we're getting you're getting beneficial. Diversity. You're getting beneficial insects. All right, we have another one that that's, uses mud. That's a um, mason wasp, and that collects caterpillars. So usually the caterpillars that it's collecting are pests on our plant. So we're happy to have them. So they're bringing them in live and letting their young right. feed off of these guys. Yeah, they sting them and paralyze them, and then the young feet on them and the nail yeah, One great. of the interesting things here at the farm is bumble culture. And that's a new term for me. So tell us about bumble culture, John. Okay. Well, we actually coined the phrase, so you should. That's why I haven't heard of it. <laughs> um, it's based on the idea of hugel culture, which is a permaculture idea of uh, layering wood, making a pile, and then putting a thin shell of soil on top and then planting into that where the wood breaks down slowly releases nutrients but also holds a lot of moisture. So we're using it, but we like uh, we, we like it with a lot of structure so that there's a lot of nooks and crannies in it for habitat for insects. Especially, uh, we'd, we'd love to see bumblebee nests in here. We've seen ground nesting bees in, in, in these small ground nesting bees. But also, um, the bumblebee colony, at the end of the summer, they produce a bunch of queens and they go out and mate, and then they need a place to overwinter. And so this, this gives a lot of nooks and crannies for them to overwinter, away from predators, out of the weather. So uh, we think this has something to do with our increased bumblebee uh, populations that we've been seeing over the past few years. So this is something you could easily do in your home landscape, maybe in, not right next to the house, because it's you know, not tidy, but you could do this on the edge of your property, right? Yeah, well, I like things. You know, scruffy horticulture to me is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I think changing that whole aesthetic, oh, yeah, you yeah. can put this right next to your house there and you celebrate go. it. Good for you. <laughs> and tell other people that this is now the new beautiful. <laughs> and uh, if we get a sign that says bumble culture, maybe we'll get some uh, headway with that. Exactly, yeah. And your neighbors will say, ooh, what's that? I got to have one. <laughs>